Hi there, welcome to this lesson. This time we are looking at transformation geometry and we're looking at reflections. So in the previous lesson we learned that a transformation of a geometric shape is really just doing anything to transform any geometric shape as simple as a dot and as complicated as any quadrilateral or really any shape. It doesn't have to be a shape with sides and vertices but we're going to stick to that because we are going to use the the vertices the coordinates of the vertices to do the transformation using the transformation rule in the previous uh, video we saw that a transformation rule is written like this where on this side we've got some expression with x and y on the right hand side describing how this transformation is affecting the coordinates okay so and then what we do is we take each one of the coordinates apply this formula that's on the right hand side to each of those coordinates and that gives us the new coordinates so the old coordinate is called the object and the new coordinate after we've done that is called the image okay that's briefly what we saw in the previous video and we described translations in this one we're going to look at reflections okay so when we reflect um, my spelling is atrocious when we reflect okay what we do is we translate translate each point Um, to an equal distance equal distance from the center line equal distance from the center line to the opposite side of the center line Okay, now that might sound very weird. Okay, but I think if we do the first one, you will see what I mean of the center line. Okay, not center line, reflection line. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, reflection of the reflection line. Although it will be the line in the center. Okay, so of the reflection line or the line of symmetry it's got many names that it, go, that it goes by let's first look at reflecting um, reflecting in the x-axis in the x-axis okay so here we have our coordinate system and there we have a point that's some arbitrary or random point just any point x, y so I'm going to reflect in the x-axis which is actually the line y is equal to zero all over this line y is equal to zero so what is the distance that this point is from the reflection line so we measure this distance okay in other words it's kind of the height that it's above the x-axis or we can just read it off as the y-coordinate isn't it okay so this distance is equal to y so what I do is I translate this point to an equal distance from the center line. So from the center line, an equal distance in the opposite on the opposite side of the center line. So if so, this length and that length is exactly the same. So this is now my image. I'll do the image in yellow. Is my image in yellow? And what would the reading here be? Well, remember what we said it is an equal distance so this distance here is also y but now measuring it in the negative direction which means that this will be negative y okay did the x coordinate change well, anything happening to x well if we go back we read the same x coordinate still so this new point will be the point x comma negative y and this also gives us a way to find our transformation rule okay what are we doing to every coordinate during a reflection in the x-axis okay what are we doing well so in other words the transformation rule applied to the coordinate x comma y is and here as i said we can write on top of here our description reflect 
in x axis okay, reflect in the x axis and what do we get well when we reflect it we saw that our image x did not change so our x part of the coordinate stays exactly as it is however the y part of the coordinate gets multiplied with a negative now what if y was already a negative number so for example let's take this this point here and let's actually use value so let's say this is the coordinate negative 3 for x because we're on the negative side of the x-axis and negative 2 for y because we're on the negative side of the y-axis now if I were to reflect it in the x-axis there then this is the distance that I'm going to carry over to the other side so that since this is how many units are this uh, how many units is this I mean that's two units so this must be two units upwards as well so now what are the new coordinates it's negative 3 comma 2 so see, even when the y coordinate is negative, to find the image of a reflection in the x-axis, the sign of the y coordinate changes. And when we want to change the sign, we just always multiply with negative. Negative just, when multiplying with a negative, means taking the opposite sign. Okay, so this is indeed the transformation rule for a reflection in the x-axis. How about reflecting in the y-axis? I wonder if you can guess. Reflecting or reflection in the y-axis. Okay, so here's our coordinate plane. Okay, taking any point, let's take that point right there. We call that point x comma y. Okay, let me take a point in the first quadrant. It just might be less confusing okay x comma y so you don't don't feel like I'm cheating you when I work with the different signs okay so which means that what I'm reading off on the x-axis is the x value what I'm reading off on the y-axis is this y value there okay now if I am going to reflect in the y-axis that means in this line that's actually the line x is equal to zero because everything on that line is equal to well has an x coordinate equal to zero and if i want to reflect in it i take the distance that i'm away from my reflection line what's that distance there well it's x units okay from zero to x is x units so i have to translate that distance on this side as well so that's also x units and and then I translate my point to that side x units. I should have said in the definition that I, I take a perpendicular distance. Okay, so I can't maybe keep that distance and put it anywhere like from that point. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, it should be perpendicular distance. I'm sorry I didn't mention that. Okay, so this new point okay so this distance is x but if i were to read off the value that's there it would be negative x because it's on the opposite side of the x-axis sorry the y-axis so this one will have a different sign than that one i hope you understand what i mean by that so that this new coordinate now becomes negative x as you can see the y value has not changed i mean it's the same height above the x-axis so the y value is still the same and that is the coordinate of my image okay so here we see our transformation rule is given by a little bit longer so I can write on top of it reflect in the y-axis okay and then the transformation rule is negative x comma y now is it important for you to go and study the transformation rules so that you know them off by heart well it might be helpful but it's not necessary because all you need to do to find the transformation rule is to go and draw the sketch quickly go and plot any points in the first quadrant and then from there go and see well what would happen to that point if i apply the transformation like here I reflect in this way then i saw okay well my x value stayed the same but my y value got a negative and I plot the new coordinate as such, and this is my transformation rule. T that gives me that. Okay, so you don't have to go and study it, it might be helpful, but um, all you need 
do be able to do is figure it out. We're going to look at one more reflection for the scope of this course, and that is reflecting in the line y is equal to x. Okay, now that one we haven't counted already when we did, what was it, uh, inverses, okay. So inverses in functions and graphs, we did inverses and we counted it there. Now this is the line y is equal to x. It's simply all of the coordinates where if I read off here an x value and I go read it off here, I will read off the same value that I, that I have there. In other words, my y value that I read off is equal to the x value that I put in. Okay, so that is the line y is equal to x. Let's clear that out. So, what would the transformation rule look like if I take any point, let's take that point, and I reflect it in this line? So what do I do? I measure the uh, um, perpendicular distance to the line and then I translate that distance to the other side okay also perpendicular again okay and I plot that new point what would the coordinates of that point be okay now there's a little bit of a um, well it's very very easy but to to prove to you that it is true I need to do a few steps now there might be an easy way easier way I don't know um, but this is this is what I'm going to do I'm going to just drop that line down there and this line down there and then I want to show you in these two triangles so that those two distances are the same this is a 90 degree triangle okay this side length is the same side length for both triangles so we've got two sides in a right angle triangle equal so if I use, Py use Pythagoras to get this side I'm going to get the same value for that side so this distance and that distance is equal okay then one thing that I know is on this point the point where these two lines cross and this line uh, intersect as well on this this line this reading here would be the same as that reading over there okay because remember what we said every coordinate on here will have the same x value here and y value there so those so this distance and that distance would be the same what that now means is that the distance here here, or let me use a different color, let's say the yellow distance here, okay, is now this distance plus that distance, okay, and this, this, and, and that would be my y coordinate for this one, no, uh, yes, that's the height, so uh, let's say that's the y coordinate for this one, and if I look at this distance, that's also that distance, there, same distance there, and the three distance there. Okay, one, two, three. So it's the same, you see, they're the same length. And this would be the distance from here to here. That distance, in other words, the horizontal distance for the reflection or the image is equal than the vertical dis distance of the object. Remember, the object's the original point original point in purple okay, chain timing and uh, that one's vertical distance seems to be the same than this one's horizontal distance in other words this you know, y value will be this one's x value okay let's see how about that distance right there this x distance now this one's x distance is that simply that distance right there this one's y distance is simply that distance right there that again this one's horizontal the object's horizontal distance is the same as the image the image's vertical distance in other words this one's x becomes that one's y 
Okay, you can see that it's actually very, 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 very simple. Okay, that if I reflect, if I reflect in the line y is equal to x, the only thing that happens is my x and my y swaps places. x comma y becomes y comma x. That's it. My x coordinate becomes my y coordinate. My y coordinate becomes my x coordinate. So, for example, two comma three will become if I reflect in my y axis will become three comma two. Okay. How about a coordinate that is somewhere here? Okay. I'll take an equal distance there translated in this direction and you notice it's somewhere there so here we have that my x value would be some negative value I just put the negative in front of you to show it would be negative while my y will be a positive value and if I reflect it I see oh now my x value is a positive x value and the y value is a negative y value why because this actually becomes the y value, the negative value that I had there becomes now my negative y value and the positive y value that I have there becomes my positive x value that I will have there. Uh, I, looking at the sketch it looks very very messy. I hope that it's not the same in your head and that this actually helped you understand where the reflection rule came from. Uh, for reflection in the y-axis and that reflection in general is actually quite simple. See you in the next video where we are doing rotate, no, enlargements. See you.